Hey, welcome back to the garage. Uh, today I thought I'd do a long overdue video. It's been a few months since I've posted. Sorry about that. Been busy with uh, with this actually. Um, I've been planning on doing a video a while about the, the newest tool in the shop. That's my new uh, CNC router table. Uh, this is something that's been on my list for a long time. Finally was able to get one. Uh, a little bit about uh, what I uh, what I went for is this is the uh, is from a company called CNC Router Parts, um, which they they uh, they sell parts, but they also sell complete kits. You can buy uh, everything you need to put a system together from them. Uh, this is their um, uh, I think they call it the Pro Forty Eight or something like that. I, I forget the exact uh, model, but it's. Um, uh, 48 inches by 48 inches cutting area, so basically half a sheet of plywood. Um, it is what they call their Pro model, which is, uh, the big difference with it is it's a little more rigid, but more importantly, it uses a uh, rack and pinion style of drive to move uh, move the uh, the gantry and also to move the, uh, the Z-axis along the, the gantry. Uh, the big advantage of that is, uh, while right now this is 48 by 48, I'm... I strongly considered going for the one that'll do uh, the 96 by 48. So it'll do a full sheet of plywood um, on, on the bed. Uh, and the nice thing is with the rack and pinion, you can actually buy uh, just some, uh, some more of the uh, aluminum extrusions to extend the frame and another piece of rack. Uh, you butt them up together and uh, longer um, linear rails and you can extend the whole thing to a full uh, eight foot. Uh, might do that at some point. I'm finding this actually works pretty well as it is, uh, but I have that option. Um, so a little bit about my setup here. Uh, so we have the um, the CNC router table. Uh, now you can optionally buy uh, legs that come with this that are made out of the same. Uh, the framework of the uh, router table is made out of aluminum extrusions uh, from a company called 8020 that uh, it's a uh, Basically, big erector set stuff. Um, uh, pretty cool stuff for putting things like this together. Uh, so they they will sell you legs that go with that, but that was a couple, uh, several hundred dollars, as I remember. It was more than I really wanted to spend for legs. Also, um, I wanted to make sure that I could move it about. So I built my own table. It's on wheels, so I can move this. Um, and I'll show you part of why that's really useful in a bit. Uh, but also that gives me some storage underneath um, on my table. Okay, so the way I've got things set up is I can actually move this around, um, which gives the, me the advantage of, you know, I, I can pull this farther away from the wall. Uh, since, what I tend to do is I'll get a full 4x8 sheet of plywood and I'll set it on here and pull this away from the wall so that it can extend over the uh, back half. And I can cut things out of the first half of the plywood and just support the, uh, uh, you know, the rest of the plywood on a stand of some form. Um, so then I can, you know, m most designs, like I, I cut some cabinets out of this and what I did is I designed my cut diagrams so that I had essentially three sections of plywood uh, that I cut it out of. So I could cut the first one as one uh, CAD program pull that forward and then cut the next one, pull that forward and cut the next one. So I was able to really make use of the fact that this is only a half sheet, only capable of a half sheet, but since it's open on both ends, I uh, was able to work with long sheets. As long as you don't have any one part that you need to cut that's more than 48 inches, that works out pretty well. Um, for dust collection, um, I built a, uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit, but I built a dust shoe that clamps onto the router and yeah, I've seen various somewhat complex uh, schemes for, you know, having hoses with movable duct work and everything. But what works pretty well is I have fairly high ceilings. And so if we simply rotate this up, you can see that that hose is just a uh, flexible hose that's hanging from the ceiling. Uh, of course, you know, it helps to have high ceilings. And that gives me... Uh, more than enough uh, range for the full area. The uh, This can move, it It doesn't get too tight. I don't have too much slack right there is the shortest distance because it's pretty much right under there and you can see there's not too much slack there because uh, this, this can stretch out and collapse uh, and when there's suction on it, it tends to collapse down. So that's working pretty well. Um, and of course the movable table has worked out really well. Um, and I've got this connected just to a, uh, 
a large dust collection. You could use a shop vac. Uh, I prefer the, the high volume of the uh, dust collection system. So originally I was planning on doing a full detailed uh, assembly video. Um, however, there, there's a few of those out there and their instructions are pretty good. So uh, as I was going through that, I realized it didn't make as much sense to uh, film the entire assembly process. What I decided made more sense is I would just point out some of the things where I had issues, some of the mistakes I made, um, and uh, just things to watch out for when you assemble this. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, I built my own table for this. Uh, now there's a, at least when I ordered this, there's a pretty long uh, lead time on these and it was gonna be, uh, I think five or six weeks to get everything. Uh, so in the meantime, I started building the table and um, one thing I didn't really think about is I, I just built it roughly to size. I looked up what the size of the thing is. And, but what I didn't realize is you really need to make the table slightly smaller than the footprint of the machine. And I'll show you why. So over here on the side, you can see that it actually hangs down below. Uh, that's the rack and pinion mechanism I was mentioning. That actually hangs out below. So right here is the edge of the table. I actually had to space things up a little bit so that this pinion gear, not sure how well you can see that, but this pinion obviously would have uh, been hitting the table. So what I ended up doing was just taking a couple of two by fours, putting it down on top of the table and then setting the uh, CNC router table down on that. Um, if I'd been paying more attention, Obviously, I could have just um, I could have just made the table slightly smaller uh, so that it didn't overhang the outside of the aluminum extrusion at all. I, I had those uh, those uh, measurements, but I didn't think about that. You know, I didn't quite visualize the whole thing out, but that worked out okay. Uh, so the other issue is on the side here, which you can't quite see from that camera. So let's do another shot with this one here. Um, there's this track here that uh, keeps all the cables supported and that normally so normally that would be uh, supported by brackets like these that bolt to the underside of the extrusion um, obviously since this is sitting down on the table that didn't work because uh, I couldn't really this is sitting on a table so what I ended up doing is uh, pretty simple I just made some uh, triangular plywood pieces, uh, used pocket screws and screwed those to the side of the, uh, of the table. Now, one really critical thing to watch out for uh, that I did mess a couple of these up and I'm gonna have to come up with a solution on this is, uh, so the, um, the axes ride on these linear bearings and each one of these has a bearing block with a grease fitting. So we have these we have these grease fittings here. Now these bearing blocks, the cases of these are plastic, and uh, when you screw, you have to screw those uh, grease fittings in. They just come with it, not installed. Uh, it's very easy to strip those out, um, especially since they are uh, they're like at a forty five degree angle, and you want them pointing, you know, the right direction. On a couple of them. Um, in the process of getting them pointing the direction I wanted, I tightened them more than I should have and I did strip the plastic out. Uh, so on one of them, I've uh, wrapped it up with a little Teflon tape and shoved it back in there. It's, it, it works until you try to put a grease gun on it. When you getting trying to get the grease gun off without pulling that back out is pretty much impossible. So I'm probably gonna have to replace one of those bearing blocks. Uh, it's good enough to where I can grease it when I pull the gun off, it usually comes back out, but I can shove the fitting back in so that uh, hopefully the grease, or hopefully I don't get dust in there and the, the grease stays in. But uh, that that was a little annoying. With, uh, so be very careful when you do that. Error on the side of under tightening. Uh, some of these I realized I didn't need to be quite as particular about the direction they pointed. Um, I tried to make them look just like the manual, but as long as you get them to where they don't hit anything and you can't get the grease gun on, leave it slightly loose, you can tighten it up later. So the biggest tip I can give you with this, uh, especially if you're new to CNC machining uh, as I am, I, you know, it's one of those things I've understood the concepts, but this is my first real hands-on 
uh, with CNC is do some dry runs once you get it assembled. Uh, what I did to start with, I didn't even have the router ma mounted. I just had uh, you know the rest of the mach machine put together and I practiced writing some simple, I used Fusion 360 to generate my uh, CAD. And I did just some simple designs with that where I do something like cut a circle and well, so what would happen with Fusion 360 CAM programs is at the end of the program, it would say, okay, we're done, now go to zero, zero, zero. So since zero on the Z axis is all the way down, basically that would mean it would jam the bit right into the table and then try to move to this, uh, far corner um, obviously that's not a good thing that's what is you know known as a crash in uh, CNC uh, machining so the way I resolve that uh, is in uh, in Mach 3 you can change the uh, change the coordinate system so instead of having plus 8 be all the way up and 0 be all the way down what I did is I had 0 be all the way up so that then when it's in the far left corner router all the way up, all the way to the left, all the way to forward, that would be zero, zero, zero. Now, once you get everything uh, working, I highly recommend the first thing you build is one of these dust shoes. Uh, so the plans for this dust shoe uh, are available on the CNC router, uh, CNC router parts website and they have the Fusion 360 files to make this. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice design, it's a uh, magnetic uh, brush that slides on, that's just a couple of pieces of uh, HDPE plastic that you machine it out of. Uh, you need one sheet of half inch, one sheet of one inch. Um, yeah, I was able to get those on Amazon. I, I will put a link to uh, the plastic I bought on Amazon. Uh, I was able to find it there. You can get it various other places, but I found quite often Amazon's pretty uh, quick and cheap on those. Um, now, one thing to watch out for with this design, uh, uh, like I said, they, they have the files for Fusion 360, and I, I don't want to go into great detail on this, this uh, since I wasn't intending on this being a Fusion 360 video, but one thing I will point out is occasionally there's you can get into a problem with Fusion 360 where you have an over-constrained uh, file. Uh, so the uh, design that they have on there, they, they, were, they did a nice job in that they made it parameterized where you can enter a new parameter for the diameter of the router so it can fit uh, any size router you know, within a certain range. So I, I mount, uh, measured the size of my Porter cable router for the size of this hole that uh, clamps onto the, uh, uh, into the base of the router. And I you know, entered that into the parameters. Everything looked fine. I didn't look at it closely enough, of course. And I cut one of these sheets and it, it didn't fit. <laughs> It wasn't even close. Uh, what I realized when I went back into it is even though I had changed that parameter because they had the uh, the sketch over constrained, it didn't. Act, it actually just gave an error when I typed in that uh, new parameter. I didn't. I didn't notice the error at first, and it still had the standard size, which is smaller than this router. So I did end up wasting a, a piece of plastic on that, but I did go back in, uh, deleted a bunch of the constraints from the file and was able to get it in. I, I verified before I cut the second one and it worked great. Um, so the design of this, it's nice simple design, two sheets of plastic. Uh, the brush is apart from a master car. It, basically the brush and the threaded inserts and everything. Uh, you can get everything on either Amazon or McMaster car. Um, and I can provide some links to that, but even more importantly, the uh, links to all that are on the CNC router parts website. Um, but very important that you have a dust shoe because the, no the number one thing that these things generate is sawdust. They take solid material and metal the way into dust. Uh, and especially if you're going to do anything like MDF and you know, if you've ever worked with MDF, you know, you get a lot of nasty dust. You're going to wish you had one of these. Now, second thing you're gonna want is a good spoil board. Uh, so the spoil board is the base of this. This you know, doesn't come as part of the machine because of course you're gonna, you're gonna cut these up. You can see this one's chewed up pretty good, uh, especially when you're just starting out, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna cut too deep, um, which you know, is fine, uh, but you know, obviously uh, you know, that's gonna chew this thing up and eventually you're gonna need to either resurface it and then eventually just replace the whole thing. Uh, so once again, on the uh, on their website, they have a CAM program for or 
the Fusion 360 file, uh, also for a couple other programs they've got formats for this spoil board that includes the uh, recessed holes. Let me give you a better shot of that. So we've got recessed holes for the mounts that uh, clamp it down to the uh, frame of the router table. And also we've got holes in it for uh, threaded inserts. So these are just brass threaded inserts you can screw in. Um, and they're on you know, regular intervals. Uh, it, now the, the uh, CAD file also has some larger slots uh, that you can put in things like F clamps that you know, go all the way through the table and clamp things down. I, I chose not to cut those into this, uh, partly because I wouldn't have room to get the uh, clamps in anyway since it's on top of another table. Uh, but also I find that these threaded inserts work uh, great for anything I need to do. You can put um, you know, a couple of bolts in along the same line just to make sure that a part is square before you start cutting and you've got lots of places to clamp things down and um, I've found that that's been everything I need to uh, clamp it down. Um, now, as you can see, this is getting uh, uh, cut up pretty well. Uh, but probably pretty soon I'm going to go ahead and resurface this. So you just need to make sure that all your threaded inserts are screwed in uh, far enough. And then you can just take a couple thousands uh, of uh, material off the top. Just, you know, with the router, just run a program. It'll probably take quite a while with a small bit to cut through all this. But you can smooth it out and make it all dead level, uh, which will help you a lot with uh, accuracy of parts. Something I would definitely recommend for practicing with this, especially as you want to play around with more complex geometries and doing more 3D modeling, is uh, foam insulation board. This is, you know, you can get this in full 4x8 sheets. Um, you can, around here, I can find it in 2 inch thick. Uh, if you live farther south, you're probably only find thinner since you don't use as much insulation down there. Um, however, I know they make it uh, three and maybe even four inches thick uh, that you can get some places. Um, but this works really well because, uh, you know, even if you crash the router into it, you're not going to break anything. Um, it's cheap and it's easy and you can actually machine things really nicely. I was just playing around with this, um, doing a uh, just uh, half of a sphere. Um, you know, playing around with tool pads, you can get extremely uh, good surface finish on that. Um, and um, so what I'm planning on doing is I want to be able to use this to do things like fiberglass molds. Um, styrofoam doesn't always work well for all fiberglass resins, but the resin I use is safe with this. So uh, I'm thinking about trying to use it to make some uh, fiberglass parts. So there'll be some videos on that later on. So uh, one final note and a bit of advice is Basically, having a CNC router, it's just like having a shop assistant who's extremely loyal, extremely detailed, and does exactly what you want. And there's key, that's the key, is it does exactly what you want. If you tell it to, you know, cut your hand off, it'll cut your hand off if it's in the way. Um, so, you know, definitely work safely. Um, remember that, you know, you really want to make sure your work coordinates are, you know, things are zeroed properly so that it's not gouging into the table too deeply, like I mentioned earlier. Um, it's gonna do exactly what your CAM program does. It's, uh, if the bit breaks, it's gonna keep cutting. If the piece is not clamped down properly and it shifts, uh, that can do some, some nasty things. Uh, you, you know, you don't wanna leave it running unattended because, you know, if that shifts and it gets to where the bit is just rubbing against something, and moving the bit piece around and not cutting, uh, it can actually generate a lot of heat, possibly even catch on fire. So, like I said, it's it's a loyal shop assistant, but it's it's kind of dumb. It'll do exactly what you want. Um, so I plan on doing some videos with some projects on this over time. Uh, so uh, subscribe if you're interested in that. Um, and for those of you who have been complaining, I haven't been back to work on my Dotson 510 project. I'm actually planning on using this to. Uh, make some of the, uh, I'm going to do some fiberglass work on that, some custom fiberglass work, uh, and we'll see how it works. This is still a, a theory, but I'm going to try using the CNC router to cut out the, uh, the shapes that I want for uh, fiberglass parts, and uh, uh, I'll learn a lot. Hopefully you learn a lot along with me, so uh, subscribe if you want to see that, and until then, get out in your garage, do something interesting.